these simple steps are going to fix your stutter and FPS drops in Fortnite. And for the first step, guys, we're going to use my own created tool, which is going to be called Clean Cache. This one you have to run as administrator. You can find it on my official website, guys. The link to it is in the video description. And I basically coded myself a tool which helps you to delete any sort of temporary data and especially also the ones which can cause stutter in Fortnite. So what we know about to do is basically clean our PC with this easy to use tool. First of all, we have temporary files. So therefore just simply type in that one and it's going to clean all up the temporary files. Then we have clear specific browser cache, which is just like additional feature. You don't really need it right now, but it's nice to have it in here. Next up, we have Windows update files, prefetch files, which I'm now going to delete actually with the number four and then press enter. Also Windows delivery optimization files. These ones could also be corrupted. So definitely you should clean them as well once in a while guys. You can see now the delivery optimization service is stopped and now they're getting cleaned up guys. Finally, what causes actually a lot of stutter for a ton of people is DirectX shader cache. And this one you should be cleaning after every single major Fortnite update. So what we're now going to do is press nine here on our keyboard and it's going to completely delete the DirectX shader cache. Now keep in mind, it's going to take one or two full matches until it actually gets rebuilt. But then afterwards your Fortnite should be running really Really smooth again. This is just a nice tool to have over on your PC. And the coolest part is I'm basically giving it to you for absolutely free. I sadly cannot turn it into Axe because it will actually give us a false warning. Like if I would try to do it with the PS Axe style, it would give you a false warning. But yeah, guys, I basically made this myself. Therefore, I would highly recommend it to just keep it on your PC. And yeah, you can use it whenever you need it. Next up, we want to take a quick look at the brand new NVIDIA app, guys. And if you're still using GeForce Experience, you should definitely swap over to it. The link to it is also going to be on my official website. And once you're in here now, basically, what you want to do is click over to drivers in the first place and make sure that you have the latest version of the GeForce Game Ready drivers. This is super important guys that it's the game ready ones. You can just simply check it here as well with this small icon and it's going to tell you exactly if you have the latest version or not. If not, just simply make sure to download it and reinstall. Next up, we want to go into graphics and go over to global since there's a bunch of stuff here which you also need to set up to actually fix any sort of stutter. What you want to make sure is basically copy all of my settings. Don't utilize any RTX dynamic vibrance settings if you're experiencing stutter in games. CUDA GPUs should be on your current GPU. DSR factors turned off. Image scaling as well turned off since applying a stretch resolution is a lot better for your performance. Then low latency mode guys, for me personally, I get it on on. But press are still arguing if on or ultra actually feels better but for me I gotta say on feels the best. Maximum frame rate guys, this one you actually should have on off so it's actually not capped. Power management mode you actually have to put on prefer maximum performance. Shader cache file size, this one you want to put to 10 gigs exactly. And vertical sync should be completely turned off guys. This one is super important. Virtual reality and everything like that should be of course on off and then you're already set and good to go. Then we're gonna go over to settings, go over to notifications, make sure to uncheck both of these here. And next up under about you want to make sure to actually uncheck configuration, performance and user data. Besides that you can already close the tool and everything is set up as it should be. Next up was also very important is guys that under the Epic Games launcher I see a lot of people who in their Fortnite installation options actually have safety world checked or something like high res textures which you obviously don't need, DirectX 12 shaders which you should also actually uncheck and then you should also only have one main language. You should make sure that only the main language is actually checked and besides that it should look exactly like this here. Only Fortnite core and Battle Royale should be there and apply. And of course guys the most important part is as well your pain. This is why you see FNCS winners like Mero, Asian Jeff, and many more pros use Jira Booster. The best part is with my link in the description, you can actually try it out for absolutely free guys. Jira Booster is gonna look for the best DNS server in your near, always making sure that you have the lowest and most stable ping. Even if you already have really good ping guys, it's still worth it because it's gonna make it way more consistent. The Jira Booster is gonna actively in the background search for the best DNS servers, always making sure that you have the best connection to Fortnite. As mentioned, check it out for absolutely free with the link in the description guys. Now in this next step, I'm about to show you how you can create your own custom power plan for Fortnite. So therefore make sure to follow all these steps. And in the first place, guys, what I want you to do is actually open up edit power plan. This one you're going to find just simply in the Windows search bar, open it up, and then we're going to click under power options on the top. You can already see that I created myself here my own with stripes power plan. And this is by the way, where we're going to apply all of the best settings. How you can actually achieve this yourself is go here first of all under create a power plan on the left side. Make sure that you select as the base profile, of course, the high performance one, and then you can name it however you want. Just real quick here, I give it a random name, go under next, and then you're going to make sure to click under create. Then Afterwards, you should have your power plan here in the first place, but this is only one of the many steps which you're about to do in this video. First of all, go under change plan settings and then go under change advanced power settings. Here we can also apply a bunch of settings which are going to be pretty useful later on, so therefore let's go through this real quick. First of all, under hard disk, you can see turn off hard drive disk after and you want 
to make sure to put this to zero so that it actually says never. Then we can scroll down and see wireless adapter settings. And if you guys are actually using a wireless adapter for your Wi-Fi or whatever, you want to make sure to put this here to maximum performance. Then under sleep, you want to see sleep after, you're going to put this to never, allow wake timers and leave this on enabled. Then you can see PCI Express, you're going to open this up, link state power management and make sure to put this one to off. And also under display, you're going to click under turn off display after and leave this one here on zero as well and click under apply. And this is now where it gets interesting guys. We're going to be utilizing a tool called Power Settings Explorer. And this one you can find on my official website, link in the video description or just simply Google it up. And on this next step guys, we're going to be utilizing a tool which is going to be called Power Settings Explorer. And with this one, we can basically customize the power plan which you just created even more. First of all, make sure that you actually selected the power plan which you just created previously. And now I'm about to show you how we can actually unhide a few features which are going to help us out. Basically, any sort of like throttling, power saving modes and all of these here we're going to fully disable. But before we're going to start with that, I want to mention one very important one. The process performance core parking minimum and maximum core setting. Now the thing about this is, if you have a Ryzen CPU or any newer Intel CPU above the 11th gen, so 12th, 13th, 14th, you actually want to enable core parking because core parking is going to prevent as well thermal throttling. And you might ask yourself right now, okay, why would you want core parking? Why don't you want all of your CPU cores to be active 24 seven? That has a very specific reason guys. Core parking has evolved so much that your CPU is going to decide under which circumstance it's gonna need more cores. So mostly if you're hopping into games, it's gonna automatically unpark all of the needed ones. And on top of that, if you have all your cores permanently unparked, you're going to cause thermal throttling most likely because your CPU also has every single core unparked even while being in idle state, so normally using Windows. So therefore, if you have a Ryzen CPU or anything above the 11th gen, you actually want to make sure to unhide both of these here and actually put them to zero. That way you basically disable it completely. We're also going to look here now for the maximum processor core state and this one we're also going to put to zero. But if you have any Intel CPU until the 11th gen, so something like a i7 10th gen, you actually want to make sure to put both of these values to 100 to actually fully disable core parking. So therefore, yeah, just simply go under these two here again and make sure to enable here 100%. This was just the most important feature, so therefore let's cover now the rest. First of all, link power management, this one you want to uncheck. Then straight up underneath, we have maximum power level, this one we also want to uncheck. Also turn off hard disk after, also uncheck. Then we have link power management adaptive, this one we also want to uncheck. And primary power state transition latency tolerance, this one we also want to uncheck. Then next up, once you scroll down a little bit guys, we can see the wireless adapter settings and here we have as well power savings mode. This one is already unchecked since we just did it in the previous window, but here again, double check if it's actually not in there. Once we check that, also here we can see now legacy RTC mitigations and this one you also want to uncheck and then we can see here now allow standby states, this one you also want to uncheck and the same as well with allow wake timers, this one you also want to uncheck. Then we're going to scroll down even further until we can see USB settings and in here now we have USB hub selective suspend timeout, this one we want to uncheck and the same as well with USB selective suspending setting, this one we also want to uncheck. Then we're going to scroll down even further until we can see idle and in here now we have something like INO, Colizing, Timeout, this one we want to uncheck and the same as well with Deep Sleep enabled, here we also want to remove actually the check. Then even further guys, we have interrupt steering settings and here we have interrupt steering mode. Here you also wanna remove the check. Then we were gonna scroll down even further until we can see you now under processor power management, processor performance increase threshold, this one you wanna uncheck. And once you're still in the same menu guys, you can see allow throttle states. Here you also wanna remove the check and then go a little bit down until you can see processor idle disabled. This one we also wanna uncheck. Then you're gonna go down even further until we are here now under display. And here we should have turn off display after, this one is already unchecked. And once you make sure that everything is applied exactly how I have it guys, you're going to click under apply here on beneath. And now once we're done with that guys, you crafted your own custom power plan. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and check out the two videos which are right now on screen as well.